Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for Silver Education, Acquisition, and Entertainment. And hey, the place to be is my LCS, the Gold Depot in Crown Point. We're going to be talking jewelry, vintage bullion, and amazing Native American jewelry artwork. Hey, Rich has done a pretty nice job with the Gold Depot, don't you think? And as always, keep watching till the end to see what I purchased. All right, hey, uh, back at the uh, Gold Depot, this time with April. April, uh, welcome to my program. Thank you. Hey, thanks for having me back here, and uh, Rich is busy with a customer, and uh, actually I came to see you to talk about some jewelry. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been in uh, lots and lots of coin shops, and most of them have jewelry of some sort or, or another, but you guys have a really nice selection here. And uh, jewelry is something I know virtually nothing about. Uh, do you do a lot of uh, buying and selling of jewelry here? Yeah, we do quite a bit. Okay. Uh, I was curious as to, uh, like, I know when you go and buy jewelry brand new at, like, a jewelry shop at the mall, there is a huge, like, markup mm -hmm. on the gold and silver and the diamonds and, you know, the, all the jewelry in general. Yeah. Um, could uh, someone walk in here and get a, like a, a pretty decent discount compared to what you'd find at the mall? Oh, absolutely. I, I tell people I don't even know what the point is sometimes of going to jewelry stores because you're paying for the brand name. Mm -hmm. It's all, you know, the corporations, the markup. Just out of curiosity, how often does somebody walk in the shop to sell jewelry? Um, usually every day. Okay. Multiple times a day. So it's a common thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes it'll be just something they found randomly. It'll be something they've had for a long time. We get a lot of people whose uh, grandparents passed away and they have a lot of old vintage stuff that they mm -hmm. have no idea what it's worth. Mm -hmm. So we, we help them to you know, go through it and try to figure out what's real, what's not, and show them good, you know, simple ways to test it. And we'll help them look for markings and all that and we'll, we'll explain the process. Okay. Well, I, I did notice that you have quite an interesting variety. It's, it's stuff right. that you wouldn't find. Yeah, you uh, never know what, what's going to walk in the door. It's <laughs> different every day. Yeah. We have Native American stuff, which is one of my favorites. Uh -huh. I, love, I love when that stuff walks through because it's just so different than any of this kind of gold or silver jewelry. And then they, the old pawn stuff, they used mm -hmm. silver. Okay. I, I, speaking of silver, I did notice in uh, one of the cases that you had that uh, the silver chains, uh, just looking at them, seem pretty reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. Silver, is, as far as wearing it out and about on a night on the town or something like that, is a little out of fashion. Does that mean, uh, you, know, you know, since there's less of a demand, that you could sell it for a little cheaper? Yeah, because there's nothing super fancy about it. It's just basically its weight. Um, they're pretty pretty standard there's okay. no additional um, gems on it there's nothing fancy it's just a chain yeah um, so I can like give a weight price on that and you know it doesn't have to be uh, a huge difference between what we actually pay you for it and what you um, buy it for just a little bit you know just really good deal on some yeah. of this stuff like huh yeah so I just yeah, it has me wondering, do some people stack jewelry? I, I personally do. I haven't sold any of my sterling jewelry that I've had through the years because it's just like coins. I'm holding on to it until the price goes up, at least for, for me personally. Mm -hmm. But, um, it, you know, some of it's family heirlooms and stuff like that for my grandparents. But also I have some junk stuff laying around that I'm, I'm just waiting till I have enough to bring it in mm -hmm. because, you know, you're just small a, a little ring you're not going to get a ton for but when you set it aside it adds up mm -hmm. and it you know people are sometimes surprised mm -hmm. the kind of money they walk out of here with yeah like they wouldn't think they would get that much if you had to estimate what percentage of the sales of, at, at the gold depot would be jewelry i know you're mostly a bullion um, numismatics well, yeah. but would at least 10 or 15 percent oh yeah like um our on our ebay i can uh -huh kind of see what's selling there and since we've opened up this location and I've been able to bring out a lot more of yeah, what we had in absolutely. the back um, a ton and, more space and be able to more. clean it and research it and get it listed and get it out for people to see our, our jewelry sales have definitely gone up from where they were uh -huh. at the other location so we have a lot you know there's good demand people a lot of people coming in here looking for jewelry
Before we get out of uh, the jewelry department here and head over to the silver department, uh, you know, going from something I know virtually nothing about mm -hmm. to something I know a little bit more about, uh, is there anything else about jewelry that you'd like to mention? Yeah, so this is, uh, this is an example of <coughs> what, what we're sending off for scrap. Um, okay. Some of it could be relisted okay. and sold, but a lot of this will be melted down. Okay. So um, this is 10, 14, 18 carat. So, and we also, you can mail us your old scrap jewelry and we can send it off to you and we'll give you 90% uh, its value. We'll pay you for it and we can, we can accept multiple ways to send you payment through PayPal, uh, Venmo, Cash App, we could do uh, check, we could do a wire, we could do ACH, so we try to make it easy for people and not so complicated. We get we get surpri surprised all the time by people coming here and thinking it's going to be way harder uh -huh. than it really is. Okay, well that's good to know because I would venture to say that 95% of my viewers are not local mm -hmm. and uh, so it's, it's nice to know that option and at the very least they can give you a holler and Maybe yeah. you get some questions answered. Get them started on it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Get them going. Okay. Sure. Well, cool. Let's uh, jump from jewelry to silver. And right. <coughs> All right. So uh, I know uh, jewelry is your forte here at the Gold Depot, but you do know about silver to a certain extent. And there's an item there in the uh, case that I noticed that's kind of a crossover between Absolutely. Uh, gold. Yeah. Uh, it just came in, huh? Yeah. This is something I thought that we needed here okay. because it's... It's jewelry, silver rings made from coins. Oh, can I uh, take a look at sure. that? Sure. And he just brought them in today, so <coughs> you're the first one to see these. Very cool. So is this a local guy that makes these? Yes. Or? Okay. And if you come in and you like one, uh -huh. uh, he can size them for you. All I got to do is give him a call and he can get it. He can uh, adjust it if there's one that doesn't fit you perfect, but you like it. Wow. So I, I can just give him that. a call and he'll come in and take care of that. I wonder if he would make a Libertad ring. I'm sure he would. That's pretty darn cool. Yeah, pretty much anything you want. What's the price range on something like this? Um, the smaller ones here, the smaller bands are 75 mm -hmm. and the larger ones are 125 Okay, cool. Uh, you know, uh, Morgans and uh, Walking Liberties are these ones right here, halves. And uh, there was something else in the the cabinet uh, down there at, at the very bottom mm -hmm. that really, can, can you pull that uh, special piece out? That one? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought you meant. Yep. Yeah, Rich uh, was explaining to me. Oh, it's, man, it's heavy. Yeah. Rich was explaining to me that he just picked this up uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, viewers, I'll tell you what, uh, you guys are seeing this. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to last here, but uh, how often do you see a 50-ounce Engelhard? Uh, that is pretty darn cool. And that back from the '70s, cool. some at some point, and vintage, mm -hmm. and cool as heck, and an, unfortunately a little out of my price range mm -hmm. at the moment, but uh, a cool piece nonetheless. I, whenever I come in, I'm always looking for the vintage. What would you say about silver stacking? Have you uh, you've been at this for a while now? Have you noticed any particular trends? Um, well, I've been seeing a lot of newcomers come in lately. Uh, there's something something in there people are feeling something because people that have been thinking about it for a long time But just never had the motivation uh -huh. to do it But I'm getting so many phone calls and so many younger people coming in here too, like uh -huh. college age really? uh, Just married okay. early 20s type age really asking a lot of questions and some of them are are bringing in a decent amount of money And uh -huh. and buying it now they find out you know the price and mm -hmm. they they sense something going on in the world And they just have a feeling they need to do it now. I've been getting a lot of that yeah. Silver, gold, what are they buying? Silver. Um, some gold, but mainly silver. Mainly bullion. That's what they're after. Okay. That's what it seems to be lately. Is it hard to keep the silver in the, uh, the cabinets here? Is it yeah, it, I mean, it seems like it, but Rich is really good at making sure, you know, he plans ahead. Uh -huh. He's been really good, I've noticed. Um, yeah, and I, that we run out, but then we, we turn around and we get more. Well, just so. this last weekend, he was at a show, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure he's worn out today. From oh the yeah, show he's exhausted. Uh, but you know, you know, he goes and he quite acquires mm -hmm. silver uh, and gold and other neat things. And you, gotta, you know, I always get stuck on the vintage because that's yeah. the stuff I like the most. Unfortunately, most of it's out of my price range. But there is a 
a gold piece there that's oh, from Australia. I know what you're talking about. Right oh, yeah. Here. I got to show this. Yeah, that's really neat. And, uh, you know, everybody loves the Perth Mint stuff so much, including myself. I was kind of late to the party when it comes to Perth Mint. But take a look at that Perth Mint uh, vintage gold. Man, that is cool. Really cool. There it is. says it right on the back. Perth Mint. And there you go. All the way from Australia. Uh, that's a shape I hadn't really seen before. Yeah. And a uh, pretty cool piece. Uh, hey, Abel, you were mentioning uh, about the Native American stuff, mm -hmm. and I did happen to notice it right here. Uh, what can you tell me about Native American jewelry? Well, um, a lot of this was from, you know, it started in the early 19, mid 1900s, and a lot of uh, American artists went down and they learned from the Native Americans, and then a lot of them are Native American artists. But we we do have a really good customer base for turquoise jewelry, so I don't think people, a lot of people know that we are looking for vintage turquoise Native American jewelry. So, speaking of vintage, is this new stuff or is this vintage? Um, a lot of, most of it's vintage, especially if it, you know, the older, the old pond, the more valuable it is. Mm -hmm. So you can see um, some of this stuff, that's gold. Okay. And then all that down there is silver, but they use um, a lot of natural stuff like bear claws and the chunks of turquoise, we definitely will pay more for high quality Native American old pond jewelry. You've got a nice, uh, you know, collection here. Yeah. Very cool. Very Bolo cool. ties. Uh -huh. um, show that one down there. That one's gorgeous. Look oh, at that one down the there bear with the claw? bear claws. Yeah. That yeah, is cool. We have to sell those in store though. Um, eBay has a policy about listing um, things made with. Is that made with actual bear claws? Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, that's wild. Some of, like on the bottom there, that's some of the vintage Mexican jewelry from Mexico. Okay. And then the top two shelves are Native American. Very cool. You know, I'm always in here looking for silver and for coins, and you know, I've seen this stuff, never really paid too much attention. That's kind of why we decided to uh, make a quick video, uh, you know, describing it, but. Uh, hey April, I really appreciate the time and uh, mm -hmm. you know. Thank you so much for coming. There's Rich in the back. Hey Rich. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, my viewers have learned a little something here, and uh, you know, appreciate the uh, time. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Special thank you to these channel members who support my efforts to make coin shop videos for all to enjoy, and thank you. For watching. Now, if you watch all the way to this point and you haven't subscribed yet, now's the time to do so, guys. Let me show you what I picked up. And hey, this was in that one case towards the end there. Very reasonably priced. Hey, I picked it up for my wife. She likes the color purple. It's a little piece of silver, just a little something to let her know that I love her. And hey, sometimes it's the little things that matter. And just another reminder, there's a coin show coming up put on by the Calumet Numismatic Club. Hey, that's my coin club, and I will be there. So if you've ever wondered, hey, what does T look like? Come meet me at the coin show on the 29th.